Hi everybody, I'm back with a new video series all about tectonic hazards and in this video I'm going to help you understand the different types of plate boundaries and what type of tectonic hazards they create. So before we jump into learning about what happens at plate margins, we need to understand that the Earth's surface is broken into various tectonic plates. There are seven major tectonic plates, and then we have minor plates and very micro plates that we probably won't be able to see on this map. And this is really important when it comes to plate margins and plate boundary movement, because we need to understand the direction these plates are moving. Now, Tectonic plates move really slowly. They move about two to five centimeters per year on average. That's about the same type of time frame that your fingernails grow. So they move incredibly slowly. And that's all to do with deep below the Earth's crust in your mantle layer, okay, to do with something called convection currents, which we're not gonna go into in this video. Okay, but it's just something you need to know to understand how these plates move. Now, the first thing we need to understand before we even think about the different types of plate margins is the various types of crust that we have on our planet. And that's because we have two types. And this is really important when we go into later on understanding plate margins and plate boundary movement. So our first type of crust is known as a continental crust. And your continental crust is when you have land material, a continent above that layer of the Earth's surface. Now, we already know that below the crust we have your mantle layer, and your mantle layer is where you have those convection currents, where that liquid molten rock is moving around. And that's encouraging these crust, these tectonic plates to move. But we have continental, and then we have a different type of crust. This one is known as an oceanic crust. And an oceanic crust is different to a continental crust because it has ocean or a very large area of water above it. But it still has that layer above the mantle. So the mantle still sits below this type of crust and we still get that movement of that liquid molten rock, that magma below the crust surface. Now, what's really interesting about these two types of, of crust is that they're a little bit different. Your continental crust tends to be the older one, whereas your oceanic crust tends to be newer. Now, when I say newer, I'm talking like 200 million years old, but that's still the newer crust compared to continental. So continental is much older than 200 million years. Your continental crust also tends to be made up of igneous, metamorphic and sedimentary rocks, whereas your oceanic crust tends to be made of igneous rock. Now, continental crust tends to be what we call less dense, so not as heavy, whereas your oceanic crust tends to be very dense. And that's important later on when we look at the different types of plate boundaries. So, going back to this map for a moment, we know if we have tectonic plates moving in various directions, at some point they are going to meet at different intervals. Now, where tectonic plates meet, we call it a tectonic plate boundary, where two tectonic plates meet. And these tend to be the locations where we have our various tectonic hazards occurring, our earthquakes, our volcanoes, and our tsunamis. But just because this is where our tectonic plates meet doesn't mean it's the only location where we get tectonic hazards. You can get tectonic hazards occurring inside plate margins. So that's just something to be aware of. So how do these plate boundaries move? Well, there are three types of plate boundaries. The first one is known as a destructive plate boundary. You will be more familiar with this term if you are studying Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 GCSE Geography. But for any of you who are studying Key Stage 3 5, you are studying A-level Geography, you will be more accustomed to the phrase convergent. Now, sticking with the destructive plate margin term, 
We know that if we think of the word destruct, we're thinking about something being destroyed. So with this type of plate boundary, something is being destroyed. And this is where an example comes in. So I'm gonna give you an example here of two particular plate boundaries. I'm gonna give you the example of the Nazca plate, which is actually an oceanic plate. And then I'm going to put that next to the South American plate. Now, these two tectonic plates, they actually move towards each other. Now, why do they do that? Well, they do that because the convection currents deep below the Earth's crust in your mantle layer encourage them to move in that direction. They are converging together. They are moving towards each other. But when they do move towards each other, this is why it was really important before I went through with you the different types of crust we have. Because when they move together, we have our continental crust, the South American plate, and then we have our Nazca plates, the oceanic crust. And if we remember, the oceanic crust is dense. It's really, really heavy. Whereas your continental plate is less dense. It's lighter. So what does that mean? Well, when they come together, it means that the South American plate is light and the Nazca plate is really heavy. So the Nazca plate is going to be drawn down below the South American plate because it is the heavier one. And when it comes down and is drawn down to load the mantle, we would call this a subduction point. The plate is being subducted. Subducted meaning it's being dragged down. What will happen then is obviously this crust is going to go more towards the mantle and then obviously it's going to be warmed up, it's going to be destroyed. Hence this plate boundary being called a destructive plate boundary. Now, when it comes to thinking about the tectonic hazards that happen here, okay, we would tend to get volcanic eruptions. Now, volcanic eruptions on this particular plate boundary can occur on the Earth's crust or they can even occur in the ocean. They can be extremely explosive, so it's always good to keep an eye out if that's the case. We do also get earthquakes. These do vary in strength though, so you can get some what we call minor earthquakes and they also have some major earthquakes. Now there's also in this particular type of plate boundary a risk of tsunamis and it tends to be a potentially high risk. Then we've got our second plate boundary and this one is known as a constructive plate boundary for those of you studying Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 GCSE Geography. But for those of you potentially wanting to recap A-level geography, you might be more accustomed to the phrase divergent. Now, sticking with the constructive term, if we break this one down, we're thinking about the word construct. If we're thinking what that word means, well, we're thinking it creates something. So something is being created on this particular plate boundary. Now, when it comes to this plate boundary, I'm going to give you the example here of two tectonic plates, but this time, these tectonic plates are going to be oceanic plates, so they're both dense. I'm going to give you the example of here of the North American plate, and then I'm going to have it next to the Eurasian plate, because it actually is. Now, these two plates, unlike the destructive plate boundary I showed you a minute ago, they are actually moving away from each other. Now, why are they doing that? Well, they're doing it because the convection currents below these particular plates are moving away from each other. So they're drawing the plates away from each other. They are causing them to diverge. Now, what does that then mean in terms of something getting created? Well, it leaves this lovely gap between your crust of your planet, which then allows liquid molten rock from your mantle to escape above the Earth's surface. That will then create this new layer. And obviously we're dealing here with two oceanic plates in this example. So that's gonna actually create new ocean floor. So that is why something is being created here. 
And this is a great example here for what we call the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So this is what is forming due to these two plate boundaries diverging, moving away from each other. Now, what does that mean in terms of the tectonic hazards that it creates? Yes, we get volcanic eruptions here because obviously we have this supply of magma and lava escaping above the Earth's crust. So we obviously have volcanic eruptions. These tend to be less explosive, so more of this kind of oozing effect, so not very explosive. We do also get earthquakes, but these earthquakes tend to be minor ones, so not very dangerous. Still deadly, but not as deadly as some. And, well, tsunamis, we don't typically tend to get them on these types of plate boundaries, but you never know, so don't rule that out. But typically, we don't tend to get tsunamis. Now, our third and final tectonic plate boundary is my favourite. Don't ask me why I have a favourite tectonic plate boundary. I'm just obviously a very sad geography teacher. But if you're studying Key Stage 3 and GCSE Geography, you will be familiar with the term conservative. But for anyone teaching or obviously learning A-level geography, you might be more familiar with the phrase transform. Now, I like to tell my students to think about the serve part in conservative and think of some type of sliding action. And a really good example location wise for this type of plate boundary is a location called San Andreas. And this is a plate boundary located in LA, Los Angeles. There has actually been a film made on the San Andreas fault line with Dwayne Johnson in. Shout out Dwayne Johnson, very good film. And this is a classic example of a conservative plate boundary. Now, this type of plate boundary is a little bit different because this is where we have two tectonic plates that are next to each other. And the example I'm giving you here for San Andreas is the Pacific plate boundary. And then that is next to the North American plate boundary. Now, these plates are actually moving in opposite directions. But with a conservative plate boundary or transform plate boundary, they can move in the same direction, but one moves faster than the other. But in this case, they are moving in opposite directions. They are sliding past each other. Now, when they do slide past each other, we are going to get obviously the creation of friction and potentially a tectonic hazard is going to be created. Now, sorry to say, at this particular plate boundary, we are not going to be getting volcanic eruptions, typically. Instead, we are going to be getting earthquakes, some really high risk, high energy, major earthquakes. And this is why the San Andreas fault line is very famous. Now, tsunami wise, well, not typically we get tsunamis here because of the type of plate movement. So in this one, we tend to only experience earthquakes. Okay, everyone, so let's just do a very quick run through. So we know there are three types of tectonic plate boundaries. First one is known as your destructive plate boundary. Destructive meaning destroy something. And that's where you have one tectonic plate being subducted below another. Why does that happen? Well, this plate tends to be the denser one, the oceanic plate, whereas the other one tends to be your continental plate. So something is being destroyed here when they come together. Second tectonic plate we have is your constructive plate boundary. And with your constructive plate boundary, something is being constructed, something is being created. So in this example, we have two tectonic plates moving away from each other. And the example I gave was two oceanic plates. And that means material can escape through that gap in the Earth's crust from the mantle to create your new ocean floor. And then third and finally, how could we forget? We have my conservative plate boundary, my favourite. And if we remember the serve part in this one, it's when we have two plates that slide past each other. 
they will either move in opposite directions or potentially they could move in the same direction but one is moving faster than the other.